Hello, so most of the engineering teams I've ever worked with use Slack for their internal collaboration. And often there is a business requirement to be able to send messages from European Rails application into Slack. For example, when a new user registers to receive a Slack notification that a new user has registered. These are kind of transactional uh, notifications. And in this episode, we are going to learn how to use the Slack API to send transactional messages from your Ruben Rails application into Slack. So here I've already created a Slack channel. I'm logged in. I've also gone to api.slack.com and I'm just at uh, well, the root page. And I've got an um, empty Ruby on Rails application where I've just got a table of users. This is just a regular scaffold where a user has, let's say, an email, a name, and a phone. And whenever a user is created, I want to send the information that the user was created to a Slack channel. So let's do it. First of all, I will need to go to Slack API and get an API key. So I'm going to go to your apps and I'm going to create an app. Let's create an app from scratch. It would be much easier if you haven't created apps before. So from scratch, let's name the app, let's say Hermes, as the Greek code of messaging. And the workspace is going to be the one that I've got here. So ask demos. Let's create the application. And next I will go to bots. And I'm going to add some scopes. So the permissions that this bot can do. So here, again, it just goes down to all out and permissions. And I'm going to go to bot token scopes. And here I'm going to add some scopes. So we're going to allow the bot to send messages. So uh, chat write, then uh, file write. So he'll be able to send just messages and also files. Then chat, okay, write, uh, dot public there must be something like that okay so anyway send individual messages uh, embed links so links uh, write and links embed write okay so this should be enough send messages uh, to chats, send files, send individual messages, uh, embed links and videos. Okay, and now we need to install this application on our uh, Slack workspace. So I'm going to go to install app, install to workspace, allow, and you see we have been provided an user or auth token. Now, to be able to interact with this token, we would need to use either something like Faraday or we can use a gem that is Slack Ruby client and it's actually a great gem to interact with Slack. So I'm going to install this gem. I'm going to say uh, bundle add Slack Ruby client. So let's stop the server and say bundle add Slack Ruby client. And now there should be a terminal command to check our token, whether it works, whether we can authenticate. So um, here it is, authenticate with Slack via the terminal or via the well, command line. So uh, let's try doing this. Uh, I will go to get my token. I'm going uh, here, I'm copying the token and instead of this token in braces, I'm going to put this. Copy everything, so Slack, Slack API token and authentication test. So copy and send. And you see the status is okay. We have authenticated, we've got the user, we've got the team and so on. So now let's actually hook it up to our application. Let's uh, try to authenticate with the Slack from the Rails console, not through the command line interface. So also here there is this command. Uh, let's go client equals slack web client new. Now to be able to do this, we need to first initialize slack uh, in our application. So let's go and create an initializer. I'm going to config initializes and I will create slack.rb. I will copy this config and instead of this end of slack API token, I will put the token that slack has just provided us. So I will copy it and paste it. 
But again, this will lead to big insecurities if you just push this code to uh, GitHub. So you need to put it into Rails credentials. So I will go and say editor vim Rails credentials edit i to insert slack the key escape semicolon wq enter we have saved the file let's go to the rails console and try to access this uh, key so to access the key that we have saved to vim we will need to say rails dot application dot credentials dot dig slack okay cra then shells I had a typo and it works so instead of having this insecure token I'm going to dig into the credentials and get the key okay and now we can go uh, to the rails console and try to authenticate I will uh, quit and enter the console once again or I could just reload and let's type client equals slack web client new okay client and you see there is a client let's say client.auth test client.auth test and okay we have authenticated so it works and now let's try to post a basic message and there is also an example so we just specify the command just post message the name of the channel the text and uh, a default command as user true okay let's copy and paste let's say hello world uh, from Hermes and if I go to our slack you see we have this uh, hello world from Hermes huh. again funny it posted from my name so let's try without as user true let's hello hello from Hermes okay interesting it posts from uh, my name I guess Anyway, uh, we have successfully posted a few messages from our console into Slack. So let's try to do it uh, when a user is created. So when we type in, well, any information, we click on create and when the user is saved, we should send, let's say, the user's email to Slack. So to be able to do this, let's go to the user's controller. User's controller. And here, if uh, the user is been saved, then we are going to get the Slack client and send the message. So uh, we will need to again get the Slack client and post the message. But the message will be, let's say, uh, the user's email. So something like uh, at user.email uh, created. Okay, and this should kind of work. Let's uh, try to create a user. So, uh, one at one.com, create user. Okay, I didn't start the server, I guess. Let's quit the console, start the server. And now again, I will click to create the user. Okay, the user has been created. And if we go to Slack, you see, we've got the user's email and we see that he has been created. So looks fine. And what if we want to send multi-line text? And what if we also want to send some kind of uh, code blocks or some kind of links? Well, we can also do it with this uh, Slack client and it's actually quite easy. To be able to do this, we will uh, just add some kind of multi-line formatting. So I will create a new, let's say, private method. Let's say def uh, uh, markdown uh, text and to be able to have some kind of multi-line text I will add this kind of uh, here doc text text and here I will say user.email next I will also say let's say user what do we have name and user phone and let's add some kind of slack emoji so we have what do we have let's say uh, success or checkbox, let's say a uh, white check mark. So uh, we'll have this white check mark, uh, user created, and we'll have some kind of, uh, let's say, code block. 
uh, so this is inline code, then we will have some kind of code block. Let's also add some links. And let's add some bold text. So uh, email. Here we will have bold name and bold phone. And uh, to be able to get the user into this markdown text, I will say user. And uh, here, instead of having this chat post message with this text, I will say chat post message with this markdown text. Let's try doing it without as user true. And uh, so we'll have client chat post message, we'll have some kind of markdown text. Here we have this command to have a multi line uh, text. We've got the user and we've got uh, some emoji, we've got bold text, we've got co inline code, we've got code blocks. Let's say this is. And we've got a link. Let's see if uh, it gets sent. So I will create a new user. Back to users. Create user. Okay, I don't have this method user. I should have add user here. So add user. Let's try once again. Create user. Let's go to Slack. And you see, it has been created. So we have this emoji, we have bold text, we've got inline code, we've got a code block, and we've got uh, some kind of uh, link. So it all works. And uh, let's try also sending some kind of file to Slack. So let's say we've got an image in our assets and we want to send this image. Let's add uh, an image to our assets. I will go to app, images, and here I will add some kind of uh, image. Let's add this image. And uh, to be able to send an image, it's also actually documented in the API, we have this files upload. So let's try to upload a file. I will, uh, let's say, try to upload this file whenever a user is uh, created. So uh, we will say clients files upload, we will have the path to the file. How can we get the path to this file? I will uh, better make it like this, uh, file. Uh, path equals rails dot root dot join uh, app assets images and then it will have the file name dot to s then the file name will be sample image dot png and uh, this file will be further upload new we will have this path so it will be the file path like this and the type is image png not jpeg so png and the channel will be let's say general as user but let it be true file and avatar file name will be dot png or actually we can use this file name And let's see if it works. So I expect this uh, image to be sent to the Slack channel whenever I create a user. Let's try to create a user. So uh, some kind of email sends an image, phone, create user. Let's go to Slack. And you see this uh, image from our assets has been attached to our Slack. So works nice. And just to refactor this code uh, a bit, you see we have this uh, Slack client that we are initializing here. Let's initialize it somewhere else. Let's create, for example, a service uh, where we would uh, initialize this uh, Slack uh, client and we can call it from there. So let's go to our app, create a new folder named services. And here we'll have something like uh, Slack, uh, client so i will say slack client.rb and here i will say module slack client here i will define the client so def client 
and here I will say uh, how do we authenticate? We'll say Slack Web Client U. So, and we will uh, want to authenticate test. So I will say dot tap um, and auth test, and we are going to rescue from uh, not authenticated with nil. So rescue from Slack Web API errors. Uh, not out with nil. Usually, well, if you have an error, it will be saved. And to be able to call the Slack client dot client, we are going to add a module function client. So module function client. And this way, we'll not have to say client equals Slack web client u, client auth test. We are just going to call Slack client dot client. Let's see if it works via the console. I will stop the server, say Rails, Rails console, and say Slack client dot client. And here we have uh, got this client. So we can call it from anywhere in our application. So uh, I'm going back to the user's controller. And instead of uh, this, I'm just going to say, Slack client.client .client, files upload or whatever. Let's go back to the Rails server and see if it works. So we are going to once again try to create a user, new user, and I expect uh, this image to be sent once again, but already using this uh, module function Slack client. And you see the image has been sent again. So everything works. And we have successfully sent uh, inline text from our application to Slack. We have sent uh, blocks with markdown and with uh, uh, code blocks with links and so on. And we have also sent fi uh, files like images from our application assets into Slack. And that's about it. These are, let's say, the main uh, things you would want to uh, know to send transactional messages from your application into Slack. Thanks for being with me. See you in the next episode.